Hello, you guys. How are you all? Thank you for being here. Sorry for the wait. Uh, my freaking ring light broke, um, but it's back on. So, hey, it's working now. So I'm no complaints. How are you guys? Happy Sunday. Hey, West Virginia holler girl. Hey, Nadie. Hey, Punksy. Hey, Amanda, Melissa Jade, my May MK. Hey, Amy, Tia. Thank you guys for being here. Hey, Dom. Hey, hoping for answers. Cool gamer, K Brace, Humanimal. I'm excited because today we're going to talk about the actual case. I'm going to start and show you just Julia's recent stories just because I just happened to look and I found something interesting. But the whole point of today, we're going to talk about the actual case, the timeline. I'm going to show you. Um, the family explaining what happened just quickly. And then we're going to do another live next going into the parents interviews. I, I want to do like a whole deep dive series into the case, but there's a lot to it. And there's many years of, of stuff happening that's happened. You know, can someone interpret the time zones for me? How much time away? Oh, will this begin? Well, now, <laughs> Hey, Peyton, let's see. Lori, hey Jordan, how are you guys? What are you guys up to today? Have you had a lazy Sunday? I kind of had a lazy Sunday for most of the day. Let me see. I'm going to turn my camera off just so, because it makes the internet go faster. Um, I like to be on camera, like to connect with you guys. But when we're looking up videos and documents and stuff, sometimes it's just better without it. Hey, Aussie True Crime. Hey, Lynn. Good to see you. Hey, Marcus. Thank you, Budget, Budget Jones. I got, it's a Walmart special, baby. Thank you, Corey. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Amanda. Alibi. How are you guys? Hey, Karina. So many awesome people in here. Thank you guys for being here. All right, let's get, get right into it. Um, I think we'll just start with this Julia crap to get it out of the way, and then we're going to get into the case. So let me pull up. Hey, Mama Bear. Now there are new details. Julia is all of a sudden coming out with it's quite interesting. Um, and on her story, she's sharing that at, I thought this the way that this was written was also very interesting. I'm investigating the woman who claims to be Madeline McCann. I will review her, reveal her true identity. She's not invest. She's invest. She this says it as if she's investigating Julia, you know. And I'll be really interested if it kind of spins that way. Oh, yeah, guidance. There's new like this girl who thinks Madeline McCann claims to have overheard her mom say we took her. The girl who has gone viral in the last week thinks she could be Madeline apparently claims to have overheard her mom say we took her when talking about her. This is a new detail that she's all of a sudden dropping. Um, and she's she, people are I've seen it. A couple people talking about it and she's sharing this on her stories what we found after some digging is that she overheard her mom saying something along the lines of i don't know why we have this girl she was she's always been a troublemaker since we took her dr fia said since then she started to question what was going on and whether her parents were her true parents Dr. Fia added, we are doing everything we can to find out the truth of Julia's background and find out her real identity. Wow, that's quite a, that's a crazy detail for us not to, you know, to hear this far into things. You literally, she overheard her mom saying, oh, she's been trouble since we, since we kidnapped her or whatever. Come on. Agree, Melissa. It sounds absolutely ridiculous. Hey, Tiffany. Sorry, I had to chug some water. I just can't believe that these details are now coming out, but whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Julia said her parents have said other things that have made her question her identity. Um, said her mother didn't want to talk about it. She said the past is in the past and she's not going to talk about the past. She said now is the future and we should focus on the future. My dad said, even if I'm not your father, will it change anything? Oh, whatever. I'm sorry. 
I just, I, I can't, this is ridiculous. We took her, more people sharing that she overheard her mom say we took her bull crap. If that was the case, why did that not come out the very first day? That is a lie. I don't believe it. Not even for a second. And so, yeah, that was the new thing I was going to show you with them. My left eye has two colors, too. From now, you will see proofs. <sighs> Why wow, this post is covered. Um, Peter Nay. I actually didn't even see these yet. I just seen the first, the claims of we took her and I was like, oh no, I've got to show this. This is ridiculous. Men from the UK sent me blah, blah, blah. Who cares? I'm not getting into that anymore. I just cannot absolutely ridiculous. So let's go ahead and start talking about the actual case. What happened to Madeline? Many people think that her parents are responsible. I don't have an opinion because I'm just learning the case. Like I was watching some of this before. I want to, uh, I think we'll start with this video because I have a timestamp where the parents are actually explaining what happened that night and they're showing visuals and stuff like that. But first I wanted to show you guys, this is the last photo that was ever taken of Madeline. It was taken the day that she went missing. Look at her, how beautiful. And you know what? I'm sorry, but you guys, it's just the truth. There are freaks out there who are watching and looking for beautiful kids and waiting for opportunities. That is just the truth. I do side eye her parents. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I can't wait to get into that. Hey, truth teller. Yes, TT, it was awesome. Her live last night. Many people, yeah, really enjoyed that. If you guys missed it, go check it out. MK said great live last night. And people thought I was being rude for asking direct, obvious questions. I, I appreciated your questions. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Lots of stories for attention seekers to make up. Oh, I'm going to show you another case because we've talked about some other people who've come forward claiming to be her as well. Um, so, daggone chamomile Febreze trash bags at Walmart. <laughs> daggone it. Sadly, I'm from the UK and I believe the parents are involved. And sadly, Madeline is no longer with us. Okay, well, let me pull up the video where they explain what happened. I have a timeline I found in an article we're going to pull up as well, but I want to show you them explaining it and they show inside the room and stuff like that. Look how stinking cute she is. Oh my God. Just absolutely beautiful child. Um, so this is the one that has the... What's that? Earn up to $180. Just a moment. Another ad are you wanted to be on vacation forever. Y'all were talking about that last night in Truth, uh, in Truth Tellers Live about getting premium. And I paid for it for months, but my iPhone now has like where I can um, keep it in the background playing and I quit paying for it. But maybe I need to need to start. I've only watched one full live in two weeks and it was yours on this. I'm glad you're doing a timeline. Hey, that girl. Good to see you. I haven't seen you for a bit, girl. I am so if you. Uh, OK, anybody who's followed that story, the very last live that I did on it is going to show you why I am just so absolutely done with that story and just reporting on it like like we just did for a moment and then getting into the, because I do believe that it is complete BS now after that. So Christian Bruckner is involved. Her parents had nothing to do with it. However, they left the windows open and that's how he got in. Well, here, let's listen to them for a moment. The children were in bed by 7 o'clock. Their parents left for dinner at 8.30. The tapas bar was across the pool from their apartments. The McCann's apartment was on the end, the most accessible from the street. 
The front door was locked, but the sliding patio doors at the back were left unlocked to allow easy access to check on their children. Madeline was asleep in a single bed in the front room where her parents kept the window closed and locked. The twins, Sean and Emily, were in travel cots by her side. At 9.05, Jerry went back to check on the children. I saw her and I had one of those parental moments where I thought, God, we're so lucky. Look at her, three children having a lovely holiday. Kids were really enjoying it and I just lingered for a few seconds and thought how beautiful she was. Um, and that so was... was the last time I saw her. So, you know, you guys know we have to pause for fair use purposes. We can't just take the content and play it. Um, I did think that comment was kind of that stood out to me. The very last thing he thought was how beautiful and lucky he was, I, you know, but I think that all the time about my kids. Um, a couple things though, I want to say to you guys. First, Humanimal says she doesn't. That's really interesting because I know you followed the case. You said you don't believe Christian Bruckner is involved. Now, the way it that I understand is that the police, I haven't got there yet in my research, but I have a couple 2020 saved about his home, what they found in it and all of that. But I, I understand that police have pointed to him being possibly involved, right? I'd be curious why you don't think he is. Um, that girl says, I can never leave my children when I go eat like that. Never. I hate to judge, but that was a huge wrong move. I completely agree. I, I think like no matter what that, they're, you know, they're respond they have, they were negligent there, you know, and then also Jordan said, why not take the other children? And I think that that's totally fair comment, a question, um, because I wonder the same thing. However, think about it. There's other kids. This is like Elizabeth Smart. She was kidnapped and her sister watched everything. And something even more interesting with that is her sister waited quite a while before she went and got the parents like because people are talking about Dylan with Idaho and her waiting to call 911 and stuff. Well, um, you know, in that case, it happened. It happened as well. She was scared to death. She was afraid if she made a move that, you know, something would happen to her. She looks so much like both of her parents. Yeah, she does. She really does. I wonder what she would look like now at this age. Kate thought someone took Madeline. So she runs to the restaurant, believes the other kids in the apartment. Reminds me of Grandis and what they did after Summer went missing. Madeline woke up alone in the room by herself the night prior and asked her parents where they were and why they left her alone. They proceeded to leave her alone again that night. Oh, wow. I haven't I hadn't seen that yet. They could have easily afforded to. Oh, my God. Agree. They had t they had tons of money. I mean, come on. If you're even on vacation in Portugal like this um, and yeah, oh. The German police never interviewed him about it. They tore up Germany and found nothing. Police cleared him in 20, 2008. Okay, well, let's keep listening for a minute, and then we'll talk. Hey, humble doe. It had to be someone who worked at the hotel or resort where they were at. It wouldn't make sense for a creep to just choose that window and know there was an adult behind there. That's a good point. Okay. Last time you saw her. Mm. But how do you that? Your world shattered to thin and air. It was 10 p.m. Kate's turn to check on the children. She estimates it took between 30 and 45 seconds to walk from the tapas restaurant on the other side of the pool to their apartment, number 5A. She walked into the kids' bedroom and felt a gust of wind. The curtains, which had been closed, just swung open into the room and revealed that the shutter was all the way up and the window being pushed right across. And then I just knew, I just knew she'd been taken. And I ran to the window, I've no idea what I expected to find or see. You know, you just hope you're gonna see your child every second. Whizzed around the apartment in about 10 seconds. Um, again, I don't quite know because you know, I knew in my head that someone had taken her. I don't know if I, I kind of hoped that maybe she was hiding in a cupboard or something. Um, and then I just legged it out the back of the apartment. And then as soon as I saw Jerry and our friends at the table, I mean, I was just screaming, you know, Madeline's gone, someone's taken her. Okay. 
Okay. Um, this it's interesting. Kate changed this story many times. Wow. I'm so glad that you guys know. So, cause you guys are teaching me, I'm just learning this. Like I'm going through it, you know, like the earlier today, I spent some time trying to find things together for us to go through to try to get the basic idea. Um, so yeah. And if there, you have any recommendations of like, cause I want to, I'll probably do a whole episode just on that Christian B guy, a whole episode just on the parents interviews. This is just like a brief overview. Let me actually show you what I kind of have. So have the timeline to the disappearance, the case and photos. This here is all the records from the Portugal police and stuff, but some of them are translated, not all of them. Um, we have other people who claim to see them on their trip. Um, the police reports this young lady who claimed that she was Madeline several years ago, which is very similar to the Julia thing we've got happening here. A couple of videos, um, with the Portuguese police, this detective, the McCanns were trying to argue because he claimed that they were involved and they were trying to um, basically sue him for 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 his claims. And uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting video. Um, yeah. So these this is what we're going to go through today. Let me see. This is the first thing. Uh, actually, let's go to the timeline first. So. There was a couple of these, um, and if there's something wrong, you guys, like I said, correct me if you know better than I, I think that you have to grab your news from a variety of sources and put it together and try to figure out what's legit and what's not, right? We are on the internet, which you guys need to remember that. Here, this is a message to subscribers. I don't care who you are watching. If it is your most favorite YouTuber in the world that you trust with everything in you, and they tell you, that something happened or something about a case or something is going on, whatever, you should still try to see it for yourself and come up with your own conclusions. You know what I mean? It's just so dangerous to go around on the internet just believing things, not asking for proof of things, things like that. Just remember that. I know most of you guys know, but still. <clears throat> Look how cute she is. My goodness. Three-year-old Madeline McCann vanished from a Portuguese holiday apartment almost 15 years ago. In the intervening years, a huge, costly police operation has taken place across much of Europe. Madeline's parents, Kate and Jerry, say all they ever wanted is to find their daughter. Here's the story so far. So 2007, this is the apartment block. This is the place where they were staying which it looks nice, but hold on. Okay. Hey, Eris. I don't have time to do much research. My research is video watching. My other research time is from my plant medicine and essential oils, etc. I love to learn about that stuff. I love to learn about like holistic healing and things like that. Um, yeah, I find it super interesting. Um, supplements with marijuana, with all the different cannabinoids, all that stuff. I'm fascinated by that. Except they never look. They look everywhere by Portugal. Okay, well, let's go. It goes year by year. So 2007. On May 3rd, Madeline from Rothley, I cannot say that town, is on holiday with their family in Portugal. Her parents go for dinner with a group of friends at a restaurant in the complex. Madeline and her younger brother and sister, who are twins, stay in the apartment 100 yards away. The adults had devised a rota system to check on all of their children during the evening. When it is the turn of Kate McCann, she discovers her daughter Madeline has gone. Police are called off and staff and guests at the complex search for her until daybreak. Border police and airport staff are put on alert and hundreds of volunteers join efforts to find Madeline in the following days. So I'm curious, do you guys know, were there, were there friends also taking some of these turns to check on Madeline? And it is kind of interesting that Kate's the one that, you know, finds that she's missing. So here's a little map of the apartment. This is where they were. This is the bar, Tapas Bar. 
I mean, I just, I don't understand you guys. I do not understand that. How do you leave your, your babies? <laughs> yes, supposedly. Okay. Interesting. Their friends' kids were left alone in the neighboring rooms. Oh, what? Checking on their own kids mostly. They all left their kids alone sleeping. Portugal wasn't as popular as it is now. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Tia, that girl will say a prayer for you. Oh, sorry. Okay. I don't want to jump into the middle of a conversation. On May 12th, the McCanns say they cannot describe the anguish and despair they are feeling. That's a quote. Portuguese police say they believe Madeline was abducted, but is still alive and in Portugal. On Then I guess that's because the airports and stuff like that, why they would make that uh, assumption. On the 26th of May, police issue a description of a man seen on the night of Madeline's disappearance, possibly carrying a child. And then here's a photo of the searchers. <clears throat> I remember hearing of that, and I think that they said like in pajamas or something, right? Like a child in pajamas? Or am I dreaming? In June, a Portuguese police chief admits vital forensic clues may have been destroyed as the scene was not protected properly. In July, British police send sniffer dogs to assist the investigation, and inspections of the McCann's apartment and rental car are conducted. By August, it is 100 days since Madeline disappeared. Investigating officers publicly acknowledge she may not be found alive. And just to tell you guys, I went, so I have all those records from the police there. And they have a tab that's like their final report, but it wasn't translated yet. So I don't, I've heard rumors about what the dogs found, but I've not found that um like in official capacity being relayed by the police or, you know, I haven't seen that yet. Um, on the 6th of September, Portuguese police interview Kate McCann. On the 7th, detectives make the couple goes, and days later, the McCanns return to the UK. What does that mean? Prosecutors later say there is no new evidence to justify re-questioning them. Jerry releases a video in November saying he believes his family was watched by a predator in the days before his daughter's disappearance. I need that video. Rachel Tanner gave a description but said he was walking away from the resort. So it supported a kidnap story. That man was identified later. He was carrying his daughter toward the resort. Oh, home from child care. Interesting. Hey, Maria. Hey, Wolfie. I hope everything's okay, that girl. I wouldn't leave like that if I was home going to a neighbor's. I definitely wouldn't in another country. Right. That's what I was thinking. I live beside my mom. And I wouldn't, like, come, which I'm at her house now filming or doing this because the internet's a little better. Um, I wouldn't leave Bentley next door. And, I, and he's six. And... I don't know. That's just freaking crazy to me. Okay. Sorry. I was checking my text. All right. Let's continue because I want to get into some of the more stuff. I just want to go through this briefly just so we have a little bit of an outline. I need that video, though, of Jerry. If anybody knows where it's at, if you don't mind, you could email it or Facebook message me at Allie Erickson or just tell me and I'll find it. <laughs> On the 20th of January, which I'm going to, like I said, the next one's going to be like all the pair interviews, the next live we do. And on that one, um, I'll, you know, hopefully I'll find it searching for that. On the 20th of January, the McCanns released sketches of a suspect based on description by a British holiday maker of a creepy man seen at the resort. In April, Portuguese police fly to the UK to set in on interviews conducted by the police of the McCann's friends they had dinner with on the night Madeline disappeared. Wow, so they came to the UK for that. On the 3rd of May, one year since the disappearance, Mrs. McCann urges people to pray like mad for her little girl. By July, Portuguese police say they have submitted their final report on the case. Weeks later, authorities shelf their investigation and lift the Arguido status of the McCanns. Does that mean suspect? Let me see, because like I just want to make sure that we have things clear. Arguido. 
or Guido meaning yeah named suspect or for, so are Guido normally translated named suspect or formal suspect is a status status in Portuguese type legal systems including those of Portugal um yeah so interesting okay oh thank you that girl thank you so much I appreciate that it was really sweet hey Riddler so that's what they think she would look like at the age of six Um, says they released these new images of how Madeline might look in 2010 of November. Um, in March, wait, or 20, yeah, 2009. In March 2010, the McCanns criticized the release of previously unseen Portuguese police files detailing possible sightings of Madeline. A month later in April, Jerry says it is incredibly frustrating that police in Portugal and the UK had not been actively looking for his daughter quote, for a very long time, unquote. In November, the couple signed a publishing deal to write a book about Madeline's disappearance, which is still to this day on their website for sale, um, on the Find Madeline website, because I was looking at it today and it was an option, like, get our book. The McCann's book, Madeline, is released in May of 2011. Prime Minister David Cameron asked the Metropolitan Police to help investigate. A two-year review follows. In 2012, um, the detective leading the UK review of her disappearance tells an April broadcast of the BBC's Panorama his team is seeking to bring closure to the case. The com a computer-generated image of what Madeline might look like at nine is released. A day before Portuguese authorities say they are not reopening their investigation. 2013. In May, UK detectives reviewing the case say they have identified a number of persons of interest. By July, Scotland Yard announces it has new evidence and new witnesses in the case and opens a formal investigation. How can UK detectives, I'm confused, how do they have jurisdiction to even look into it? By October, Scotland Yard detectives say they have identified 41 potential suspects. A BBC Crime Watch appeal features EFIT images of a man seen carrying a blonde-haired child about the time Madeline went missing. Portuguese police reopened their investigation to run alongside the Scotland Yard sighting. 2014. Um, in January, British detectives fly to Portugal, claims they're planning to make arrest. In June, searches in this in Praia La da Luz are carried out, <laughs> including an area of scrubland situated southwest of the Ocean Club complex. It yields nothing of interest. A month later, four suspects are quizzed by police, but no new developments emerge. 2015 to 2019. In September 2015, the British government disclosed that the investigation has caught more than cost more than 10 million pounds. In April of 2017, the four official suspects investigated by police are ruled out of the investigation, and senior officers say they are pursuing a significant line of inquiry. In June of 2019, the UK government says it will fund the inquiry, which began in 2011 until March of 2020. Um, so now this suspect, this Christian B, 2020. How are you guys doing in the chat down there? <laughs> hey, Valerie. Good to see you. Hey, Bed of Roses. Okay. Property suspect lived in during this time. There's the Ocean Club. Property linked to the suspect when he was in the area in 2007. So in June of 2020, police reveal that 43-year-old German prisoner named by German media as Christian B has, has been identified as a suspect. The McCanns thank police saying, all we ever wanted is to find her, uncover the truth, and bring those responsible to justice. We will never give up hope of finding Madeline, but whatever the outcome may be, we need to know as we need to find peace. 
German investigators have classed it as a murder inquiry and say they are assuming that Madeline is dead. The UK's Metropolitan Police says it has received more than 270 calls and emails since a new appeal for information that was launched Wednesday, so just a few days before. That's a lot for a few days in a case that that's this old. In 2022, April of 2022, Portuguese prosecutors announced they have declared a person as an official suspect in the case. They do not name the person of interest, but they say they were acting on the request of German authorities. It came after German police revealed in 2020 they were investigating a man known as Christian B. in connection with the case. German privacy laws are so different from ours. They didn't even put his last name out there at first. I think that's so interesting. Aw, MK, thank you. Let me see. I'm going to pull up my chat on my phone really fast so I can see. Thank you so much, MK. You're so sweet. I appreciate that so much. Let's see. Peyton got one. Shelly. Oh, Kib Kitty. True Texas Girl and Lou Jane. Thank you. You guys make sure that you have your um like thing turned on um, to where you can accept gifts. Because if you don't turn it on, or actually, I think they may have changed that. Is that still, or do you have to turn it on? Because I think I just heard you don't have to now. I don't know. I'm getting memberships on all kinds of channels. I've got a ton right now, <laughs> which is really awesome. Um, I love that YouTube is doing that. So that is the timeline. Okay, now we're going to switch over just to look at a few of these pictures. Look at her. Man, she is so damn cute. This photo was taken the day she disappeared. That's that last photo I showed you guys. Oh. This is the following morning. Photos were put up in shop windows around town. Oh, my gosh. Membership gifts are fun. It's awesome. It is sad. Really sad. Aw, Lori, thank you. Thank you so much. And you guys, remember I mentioned that Lori, let me get the exact thing. I don't want to get it wrong. Thank you. I appreciate that. Lori and her husband just started um, a beard bomb business. You guys should go check out their Instagram. Let me find it. It is Pickard's Classic Beard Bomb, all one word on Facebook. Pickard's Classic Beard Bomb. Here, let me type it in the chat. It looks like this. Pickard's Classic Beard Bomb on Facebook. Thank you again, Lori. That was really sweet. Um, and then Ben... Uh, Uncle Benny, I'd, I've heard of that channel, yes, Missing411, but I... Actually, I think there's a channel called that. And I think there's like a whole, like, I don't know if I call it conspiracy, but like a whole K, like topic called that as well. <laughs> but I don't know about either, much about either. Okay, this is the same day Jerry and Kate McCann spoke to the press and made an emotional plea for her return. Wow, look at him. Now, this was the day after she went missing. That's one that I'm really going to be interested for us to watch together when we watch their interviews. Then we have Portuguese police searched outside the apartment where she went missing. Look how pretty that place is. British tourists also joined the hunt in the area around the resort. The story has had international attention since 2007. Here, camera crews are gathered outside the resort six days after Madeline disappeared. Wow. Where, wait, when is the interview? Ran, um, I don't know. I just was planning on doing like several parts to this series. And there will be a specific episode where we just watch their parents, like her, the parents' interviews and stuff like that.
Okay, sorry, you guys. Let's see. Missing 411, definitely its own whole situation. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. The uh, half other snuggle nut. I thought Alex said beer too. Shit. A beer bong business. <laughs> Beard bomb. <laughs> beer bong business. <laughs> Lori, that's an idea. I mean, <laughs> why is anyone talking about John Podesta and his brother, their calendar, their likeness to the man seen in the alley street with the little girl that night? So Uncle Benny, Melissa actually did talk about that some to me. I don't know much about it, but I do. I'm just learning about the case. So like as I'm learning, I'm bringing to you the things that I found and what I'm looking at and kind of trying to make it like a several episode series type thing. But I, I mean, I want to get into that for sure. Because the pictures are of Jerry McCann, not the Podessa brother. Interesting. See, I love when when we got all these different opinions. I thought it was a beer bong business too. <laughs> Truth teller. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. I mean, <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Okay. That's a lot of press outside there, though, you guys. One of the photographs issued by Madeline's family showed her in an Everton football club shirt. Here, Everton fans hold a banner calling for her safe return. We want our Maddie back safe. There's the parents leaving church. After a service to mark the first anniversary of her disappearance. My goodness. This is, we just looked at that, how she might look at age six when they released the book about the case. This is when forensic officers in 2014 searched wasteland near, um, Praia da, da Luz, after Portuguese police reopened their investigation to run alongside Scotland Yards. In an interview with the BBC's Fiona Bruce in 2017, the McCann said they would do whatever it takes to find their daughter. Police announced a new suspect, 43-year-old German man who's now in prison for a sex crime. A Volkswagen camper van believed to be linked to the suspect was seen around the area where they were searching the Praia de Luz. Um, and then this is a picture of inside of his house, which I found like a whole thing. We're going to do a whole episode just on him, which I think it's interesting. Some of you guys who know about it don't think he was involved at all. The red shoe people, what are you guys talking about? Kate and Jerry were jogging and playing tennis in days after the disappearance. I know they may have wanted to take their minds off of it, but not typical behavior. Well, Corey, we're going to learn together, honey. <laughs> Is a rabbit hole all in itself. That's still laughing about y'all thinking I said Lori and her husband were selling beer bong stuff. <laughs> I remember in college, like my friends use those all the time. To me, it's like, I don't, I'm not, I don't really want to make myself sick chugging beer fast like that. Okay. So next, let me see what we'll pull up next. Actually, let's look at this one. This is what I was telling you guys, another person who's very similar to Julia. We spoke to the lead student who thinks she's Madeline McCann. A lead student named Harriet has gone viral on Twitter because she's convinced she's Madeline McCann. Her best friend Lizzie posted a tweet which has since gone viral with evidence where Harriet reveals uncanny similar pictures of herself as a baby. Brown spot in the eye. Um... Harriet detailed the distinguishing features which her and Madeline share, including the well-known green eye with a brown spot and the brown spot on her left leg. I think I'm Madeline McCann. The person said I often give up. She looks similar to her, but they don't look like the same kid. But they're, I mean, they do look similar. She's a cutie. But it's just, this is more common. That My point in showing you guys this is it's more common than we think. 
She has a little tiny spot in her eye. So they did an interview with her. We're not even going to waste our time going through all of that. I just wanted to show you. Okay, now I'm going to pull up these videos next. This is a, the, one of the Portuguese detectives. The McCanns were trying to take legal action against because of his claims about the family and them being, he thinks they were involved. Yeah, this is a judgment from the, the European Court of uh, Human Rights in Strasbourg. Uh, and uh, Jerry K. McCann had, had appealed to that court under what sounds as Article 8, that is their right to family life and to privacy. Now, this does relate to a book, documentary, paper interviews done by Gonzalo Amaral, who was a detective who was working on the investigation into the disappearance of Madeline, which was back in 2007 when she was just three years old. Now, he actually retired the following year, 2008, uh, wrote a book. He's actually subsequently wrote, written a, a second book in which he makes it clear that he thinks responsibility lies uh, with the McCanns. Uh, they... Uh Y'all heard that loud and clear, right? The detective believes he was clear. He believes that responsibility lies with the McCanns. Robert Marat, he won $400,000. Wow. Hey, Alan girl. Does anyone in here but me know how sexually perverted the English can be? I think it's worth discussing. Thanks, Chatters. I'm a tad rusty on the case. Well, good, because we can all learn together. Okay, let's keep listening. We yeah, uh, clearly have uh, been holding a long-standing grievance uh, against Mr. Amaral uh, and went, uh, appealed, obviously, to the Portuguese courts, who, uh, who dismissed that, uh, and then appealed to the European Court of Human Rights, saying that... Uh, saying that their privacy uh, and their rights were found to have been infringed, but that was, in a sense, a, a legal mechanism for effectively looking for redress, appealing for libel uh, in, in terms we would recognise, and saying that they had uh, that they had been misrepresented, that their reputation had been trashed. That appeal has now been rejected uh, by the court. We've just received uh, the, the judgment in front of us here. Uh, it is a, a long judgment uh, uh, and it, it makes pains, absolute pains. I would actually really like to read his book. Detective Amaral won his case. Kate tried to sue him. He has also been supported in his belief in their guilt, at least of negligence and hiding her body. Wow. Hey, Neil the Great. Okay, well, that's that because, I mean, the end of that is just about um, their case and it wasn't even finished yet at the time of that. So let me pull up this next video which is from the same news place, I think. Ooh, the Chewy app. Clumping yep. litter, salmon patch. It was more than a year ago when almost four-year-old Madeline McCann disappeared. From this video I saved and wanted to show you guys because this it was posted on YouTube 14 years ago. Hey, Mel Mel. Because, um, you know, oftentimes with these older cases, we'll... We'll get to see some of the things that were out on the news and stuff, but it's posted now and people have went back and got it. But this was posted. It's, this video has existed on YouTube for the last 14 years, which is so interesting. But okay. From this resort and it was more than a year ago when almost four year old Madeline McCann disappeared from this resort in Portugal. Now there's word that police are giving up on the case. If it is true, uh, then it is not before time. Kate and Jerry have suffered long enough in this process. Portuguese media reports the police say there is lack of evidence to continue the investigation. A spokesman for the McCanns says maybe that means the couple will also no longer be considered formal suspects in their daughter's disappearance.
of the time is now right for the Portuguese authorities to lift the Arguido status from their shoulders. In the years since she vanished, there have been reports of sightings of the British girl. They include an Irish tourist claiming he saw her near the Catholic shrine in Medjugorje, Bosnia, and a Spanish woman who snapped this image while on vacation in Morocco. The family hopes this latest development doesn't mean the police will stop looking for Madeline. The police, we would hope, would continue to search for Madeline. Uh, let's not forget her in the middle of all this. We have been doubtful about um, how much they have been searching over the last few months. That is why the private investigation is moving forward in all sorts of different directions. Um, okay. Thistle said that she that said, I don't know much about the case, but based on what you know, do you think the parents are involved? I don't have a decision yet on that because there is so much like all this stuff that we're going through right now took me a couple of days to kind of gather and, and put together mainly one day, but also some of yesterday. And this is just like part of it. I have to watch their interviews, look at the, the all the police files, like some of them aren't translated. So like because I have a link to like all the Portuguese police reports and all that stuff because it was leaked, but some of it has, some of it is translated, but not all of it. So I just don't have a decision yet, but I wanted to show you guys. So if you can see my mouse, I believe they were staying like right here and the bar was right here, right? Because it's like directly across from the pool diagonal. directions um well outside hey, Portugal in some cases Ooh, the Maria, still yes, insists their daughter me. is alive to talk about the spokesman it. says they will never give up the search judy boisha the associated press lily says when you do your live on mccann interviews you should watch the oprah one so i didn't know that we want to see like the first interviews like the first times that they made a statement and then i'll remember oprah i i bet there's a lot of them um justice jane so madeline had twin brother like twin siblings how much harder is it when your child is abducted in another country from where you live oh i can't imagine because think about it you you can't even really communicate with police fully you know jan well who do you think is is responsible since you followed it like that there's no way kate and jerry hurt madeline i'll never believe that john and amelie oh yeah the sibling her brother and sister yes maddie's story has not left the newspapers here in ireland wow jenny that's crazy that's a good one i've shared the link hope it's okay yeah of course it's okay but can you tell me the um because I don't think the link will go through if you can just tell us where to get it, um, like the channel name. Let's see. I've got some more things. Um, hmm. Let me click this. This is the, so, okay. You, those of you guys who are from, um, this is the fun Madeline website, actually. Those of you guys who are from over there, Scotland Yard, is that the police force? Um, that's the way I'm understanding it, but I want to be correct. Peter Hyatt embedded confessions is interesting. Okay, human animal. Thank you. Ooh, look, budget. Uh, Jones said the same thing. <laughs> Embedded confessions. Oh, I gotta write that in a chat or something. Hold on. Embedded confessions. Peter Hyatt. Scotland Yard is like our FBI. Okay. Oh, wow. Here in South Africa, they try to take your child out of your shopping trolleys. I just can't imagine how. How cool is it that in this chat we have Ireland, we've got all over the United States, we've got South Africa, like people from everywhere. I, I find that so, that's just, it's like one of the things that makes it so special over here um, on YouTube in general.
Oh, okay, Budget Jones. Can you um, email it to me? Here, I can put it in here. It's where I sell tada, just so don't be alarmed at the name. Um, thank you so much, you guys. Met Police is more like a big organized police department. Scotland Yard is investigations. Okay. Any normal UK citizen would have had social services and their child removed for the neglect. The Portuguese resort did have quite a criminal element. Huh. Oh, thank you, Lori. I'm still fascinated with magnets and remote controls. Think about what is happening. I know, Uncle Benny, you, you think in such an interesting way. So this is the website that Miss Julia saw what's his name on. And, you know, probably here. Can you help us identify these people? Let's look at it. Ident unidentified people of interest to the inquiry. Have you seen these people? Do you know who they might be? Well, they have a sketch of someone carrying a baby, too. These two pictures show a man carrying a child away from the family's apartment. This sighting was seen by a witness at 2115 on the evening of Thursday, May 3rd. Remember, this website is, you know, it's the family's website. It's their organization to keep her name out. Your email is scary. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Based on more recent information, the Metropolitan Police now believe this man may represent a guest at the Ocean Club who was carrying his daughter back to their apartment. However, as it is not possible to be certain that these two men are actually the same person. If you have seen this man in the pictures or suspect who it may be, please contact the Metropolitan Police's Operation Grange on, there's the phone number. now. The Operation Grange is that's just for her. Dis I think that's Maddie's disappearance. Then they have these men here. This is one of the men that Julia saw and said reminds her of her grandmother's husband. I think it's like this picture here on the bottom right, but I could be wrong. This picture shows a man that was seen several times by different witnesses during the days leading up to Madeline's abduction, and on May 3rd, 2007, he was described as ugly with pockmarked skin and was said to be watching the family's apartment intently. Wow. Okay. That's kind of interesting. This is an e-fit picture of a woman aged 30 to 35, approximately 5'2", who was behaving suspiciously in the area of Port Olympic Marina in Barcelona in the early hours of May 7, 2007. She's a person of interest to the inquiry, as yet unidentified. What is this? Audio. I was walking to the school bus stop with my mum and our two dogs. I go this way to school every day. As I was walking down the road near the apartments, I saw a man on the small path behind the block. My grandparents used to live in that apartment, so I always look at it as I pass by. The man seemed to be looking at the balcony of the ground floor apartment. He was wearing a black jacket and leaning against the wall. I don't think there was anyone on the terrace. My mum and I crossed the road a little further on, and I got a good look at him then. He didn't look at me. The man had light-coloured skin. He didn't really look Portuguese, but might have been British. He was around 1.8 metres tall. He was thin and probably 30 or 35 years old. It was hard to see, though, because of the sun, was reflecting in my eyes. He had short, light hair, shaved about one centimetre long. I couldn't see his eyes because he was wearing black sunglasses with thick frames. His head was large. He had a normal nose, a bit thin and pointy. He had big ears, but they didn't stick out. His lips were thin, and I couldn't see his teeth. He didn't have a beard or a moustache. He had lots of spots on his face, probably because of shaving. He was ugly, maybe even disgusting. He was wearing a thin black leather jacket made from leather. It had a silver zip with lots of pockets, which also had silver zips. His jacket was open and underneath it was a white t-shirt with a dark blue mark near the belt. 
I think he was wearing blue jeans. They looked a bit faded. His trainers were black and grey with a swoosh on them. Wow, okay. These are witnesses and they're different. Um, mm, this is actually very cool the way that this website's set up. Maybe I want to push a kidnapping. Dogs alerted. Cadaver dogs. That is not Gillian Maxwell. Hmm. It does kind of look like her. This is so interesting. I like this website. Okay, let's see what else they've got. Um, about Madeline. Madeline was born in May 2003, a long-awaited and very much loved, very much longed for little girl. She lives in the village of Rothley in Leicester with her mummy and daddy and little brother and sister Sean and Amelie. Madeline is a very happy little girl with an outgoing personality. She's always been a very popular little person, appealing to both children and adults alike with her funny and engaging chatter. She has many friends who obviously miss her dearly. Despite her young age, it often felt like Madeline had been on this earth before. Like most girls her age, she likes dolls and dresses and anything pink and sparkly, but with a definite taste for action adventure too. She has an incredible amount of energy and even as a little baby, didn't seem to need much rest. She enjoys running and swimming and is an Everton fan like her mom and granddad. Madeline has always been a wonderfully loving and caring big sister to Sean and Emily. I don't know how to say that, how to pronounce that. It was certainly not the quietest house on the planet with lots of giggling, singing, and the inevitable odd bit of mischief. For Sean and Amelie, there is without, without doubt a very important person missing in their life. Madeline is a warm, life-enriching little person and will never fail. We're sure to bring joy into the life of anyone she may encounter. Hey, Donna. At the top of the website, it says not secure. Like in the um, in the bar where you type the address. Purchase our book. See, remember I told you guys you can. I should purchase it. We have updates. Their last update. You notice they don't have an update about Miss Julia. Their last update was January 3rd. It says, we'd like to wish all of our supporters a happy, healthy, and peaceful 2023. As has been the case over the many years without Madeline, the kind messages of support and Christmas wishes, which we have received, have brought that extra touch of warmth and hope to our lives. Christmas and other celebratory events will never be the same with our family incomplete, but we continue to make the best of our situation while never forgetting or giving up. We head into the new year with continued determination and positivity. Um, may 2023 be a good one for us all. Kate, Jerry, and family. There is a lot to this website. There's a lot of little things I could get into. Let's see what they sell. Online store. Oh, they're not doing the store anymore, but they are taking donations. Okay, interesting. Hey, Jen Lou. Let's hear like one or two more of these witness things. And then, well, first, let me hit. Here's age progress. Uh, age progress. We saw that a second ago, though. Um, I really do like this website. I think that's very. I didn't go to school nifty. that day because I had an ear infection. I felt a little bit better around 12 o'clock, so I went out to do some shopping. I took my dogs with me. After the shop, I was walking up the road with my two dogs when I saw the man. He was standing on the road opposite the Ocean Club and he was staring at the apartment. From where he was standing, I think he could see the two side windows of the house and part of the balcony. He may also have been looking at the other houses in that direction. He had his hands in his pockets. I passed right by him on the other side of the road. 
and looked straight at him. He didn't look at me. He was wearing the same jacket as before, but zipped up. It was a colder, windier day today. I didn't really notice what else he was wearing. I remember he had a pen with a clip sticking out of one of the pockets. I could also see something shaped like a camera in his pocket. I didn't see any cars near the man on either day. That's so interesting. And it said staring at the apartment. Um, Melissa says, I just can't get over the fact they gave their young children sedatives to go to a restaurant with friends. So I have heard this so many times, but I have not seen it confirmed. Where do I find that? And what were they giving them? Have they admitted to that? Donna, no, not really. She did. She's now put out even more claims. She claims that she overheard her mom saying, you know, gosh, her behavior has been so horrible since we took her or something like that. But nothing officially like as far as DNA test or. Mel Mel says they were both doctors. They were on vacation in a resort community. Not that it makes it okay to leave her, but likely had something to do with it. Did you guys see, um, if you're following Summer's case, Candace came on last night on that crazy crime critters on the farm or whatever. What um, It was actually different than I'd ever seen her before. She was like standing she was basically like, I'm so sick of all the craziness and all of you guys fighting and all the drama and bullshit. Like, why are you here? Can we not just like find my daughter? Isn't that basically why we're all here? Um, it's supposed to be about summer. And I thought, damn, tell them like, finally, I've been waiting on her to, to speak up and, and just be vocal for that baby. And it was just, it was really like, really nice to see. If you guys haven't seen it, you got to check it out. Yeah, I read it when I saw your live. Let's see where I can, if anyone else knows where we can find it for, for certain. Absolutely, worst decision of their lives. With all the money available in the Fun Maddie Fun to the McCann's profilers, notice they didn't even bother making new age progression photos. And I, I know, I was just thinking that because that last one, she's only nine in it. I'm going to listen to. What does it do when we click on the witness? Oh, whoa, it's downloading something. I can't remember whether I saw the man on Wednesday the 2nd or Thursday the 3rd of May. It was late morning, though, either way. My partner and I had left our apartment on the Rue de Ramelette, turning left out of the door and then left into Rue d'Agostino La Silva, then onto Rue du Francisco Gentile Martins. As we walked on the road, passing the Ocean Club on the other side, I saw a man standing next to the walk by the parking area. On the opposite side of the road was a white van. I can't remember if anyone was with the vehicle or not, but I, I paid particular attention to the man because he appeared to be focused on watching the apartment block. As I walked past him, I looked at him, and for a split second we had eye contact, but, but then he just carried on staring at the apartment. I followed his line of vision, and he was looking directly at the apartment which I later found out was where the McCanns were staying. He was dark, perhaps Portuguese, with, with dark hair. He was wearing a plain yellow T-shirt. He was about five foot six or five foot seven. Y'all, that is damn, that's scary. That is freaking creepy. Um... That really, like, freaks me out. I mean, multiple people saw this man staring at the apartment where they were staying. Hmm. It's just so interesting. 
But friends they were with on that night have never said a word about that night. It's a bit odd why they haven't. Well, they did say that the Portuguese police flew into the UK to speak with them. So I thought that was kind of like that stood out to me um, for them to, you know, fly overseas to watch their to basically like do the interview with the UK police. I think that's the way I took it anyways. One of the set of doctors had baby monitors. Seems pretty simple if you leave a child unattended in a foreign country. No doubt, Mr. Wrong UK. The Guardian said they drugged the kids. Okay, Cray Cray, I'll have to find that because I've heard a lot of people say that and I was just curious where I can find like more information on it. I don't know. This is a, a really, you know, it's a really big case. So when a case gets a lot of media attention, you're always going to have more information, right? Like some of like Lyric and Devin, the case, a case that I've been covering and will continue it when it goes back to court. Didn't get a lot of attention at all. You can't find anything hardly about it. I mean, there's little groups you can find a little bit here and there, but nothing like Idaho or Watts or, you know, Kylie Rodney, the, these cases that get big, like, you know, you start to, you get a lot more information. Um, and this case is big like that. Not only that, it's so old. It's just going to be like a, a whole thing to get through. Antihistamines is what I've always heard. It says the description is very close to Christopher German, the German, the Christopher B or whatever, right down to the big head, ears and widow's peak. Hmm. Let me see. They had a couple pictures. This guy right here. Let me see if I can just pull up a photo of this guy. Wagner. I don't know if I even spelled it right. Madeline McCann, suspect. Let me get this off the screen. Tanya says, I won't even let my daughter play outside alone in my yard. But like I said, this is South Africa. I will never let my daughter out of my eyesight. I don't blame you. I do not blame you. Okay, let me see here. Madeline McCann's suspect breaks silence to slam investigation. Christian Bruckner was named as the prime suspect. I don't, I can't tell his widow's peak because the picture is like the angle isn't good for that. He's broken silence, calling the investigation an unbelievable scandal. <laughs> and ridiculing prosecutors in Germany for continuing to zero in on him despite failing to bring charges. German national Christian Bruckner, 44, accused prosecutors of persecuting him in a handwritten statement released Monday from prison, where he's serving time for a 20, 2005 essay of a 72-year-old woman in the same area of Portugal where the toddler went missing. Charging someone with a crime is one thing. It is something completely different, namely an unbelievable scandal when a public prosecutor starts a public pre prejudicial campaign before proceedings are even open, he said. You have proved worldwide through arbitrary convictions in the past and through scandalous prejudicial campaigns in the present that you are unsuitable for the office of an advocate for the honest and German people who trust in justice and that you bring shame to the German legal system. Bruckner, who lived ab abroad in southern Portugal for more than a decade, was named as the prime suspect last year in the disappearance of Madeline, a three-year-old girl who vanished from her bedroom. Says German prosecutors have concrete evidence that she is dead and they're treating the case as a murder, though no remains have been found. That's interesting. That's quoted. Can I click on that? Yes. If you knew the evidence we have, you would come to the same conclusion as I do. 
state prosecutor, Hans Walt told the BBC, I can't promise, I can't guarantee that we have enough to bring a charge, but I'm very confident because what we have so far doesn't allow uh, any other conclusion at all. Wow. Well, damn. Hmm. Along with his handwritten statement, he included a drawing of the prosecutors in a restaurant ordering a fillet of forensic, a reference to prosecutors' acknowledgement that they don't have forensic evidence tying him to the case. Wow. He, he drew that? That's crazy. It's a little crazy. All we have ever wanted is to find her, uncover the truth, and bring those responsible to justice, her parents said in a statement last year. Let me see what this is. After this, I'm going to let you guys go, and we will continue digging into this, you know, as we can. Madeline McCann's parents told, told there is concrete evidence she is. The sun, that's where it came out. Isn't that a tabloid? Here, let's go to the original freaking article. Saddest letter. Madeline McCann's parents sent letter by cops saying she's dead but can't reveal concrete evidence yet. Prosecutors in Germany have written to Kate and Jerry McCann to tell them Madeline is dead. They have concrete evidence. Suspect Christian B. killed her but cannot yet reveal details. Look at her. Hmm. They've sent the letter to them but cannot reveal the evidence yet. Oh, I can kind of see those, like, the hairline a little bit more there. Hmm. The message makes it clear they have no doubts the couple's daughter is dead and suspect Christian B is responsible. But it says revealing the evidence too soon might damage the chances of him ever coming to trial. Prosecutor Hans Christian Walters said today, we have written to the McCanns to tell them that she is dead and explaining we just cannot say what the evidence is. We have concrete evidence that our suspect has killed Madeline. British police have been informed, but don't have all the evidence we have. The results of our investigation have been shared, but not every detail has been passed to Scotland Yard. I don't think the McCanns have been informed of all the details, but they know the results. The McCann's Portuguese lawyer has called on German police to share the evidence they claim to have about her death. Mr. Walter said, I understand what the McCann family lawyer is saying. I sympathize with the parents, but if we reveal more details to them, it might jeopardize the investigation. I know it would be of relief to the parents to know how she passed away, but it would hamper the investigation if we give away too much information. This is a murder case, not a missing persons case. We have been quite clear throughout that we are investigating a murder and have evidence for that. We can understand the pain of the parents and they want relief, but it is better for them that we have a clear and successful conclusion to the case. There is no realistic hope she is alive. Of course, I understand the parents want to believe she is until they see a body. It would be easier for them if I could tell them what we know, but I can't. All I can say is there is no forensic evidence, but there is other evidence which indicates she is no longer living. I don't want to go into any details about the letter, when it was written, or how it was sent. All I will confirm is that it has been written. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Um, the McCann family spokesperson said, Kate and Jerry simply do not comment on private correspondence received from police, and nor will they be giving a running commentary. Drifter Christian B. has 17 convictions across Europe. Um, wow, the 72-year-old tourist that he was convicted of essaying 
um, the Taurus was blindfolded, tied up, gagged, and beaten with a metal pole during an attack, which he filmed. Wow. What a sick freak. That is, oh, my God. A 72-year-old woman. What in the world, you guys? That letter is so bizarre. He was later found to be completely out of line. He wanted fame. Same as Julia, in my opinion. Okay. Made a few docu-series. Oh, Jenny, let me take a picture of that so I can save it. Zero proof. He has no proof. He's so sick. Imagine the McCanns, what they thought. What? Wow. Yeah, Corey, it looks like it. It does. Hold on just a sec, you guys. Okay. Hold on. Oh my gosh, Trenton's calling. Hello. Okay. Let me see. Wow, this is just crazy. That is such a bold statement and and if uh, wow, I just I don't even know what to think you guys. These, these parents, like, if they, if they were not responsible for what happened to her, because, like, I know many of you think they were, but let's say that they're not, they've, they've been through hell and back with this. I mean, I cannot imagine, cannot imagine. Asking people to check their uh, photos for him in the background and stuff. People in Portugal. Two years later, the Met identified 41 potential suspects. And then we know it costs around 12 million pounds. Um, let's look at him right there. And then you see him. In this picture, his ears and stuff like that, they're kind of pointy. And then this is that guy that um, is on the website. He's the only one that looks in like he could even be close enough. I don't know, you guys. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up there today. I got to get the kids fed and all that good stuff. What are you guys going to get into tonight? Did Portuguese deceit detective win a case against the McCanns recently? Yes, Kelly. Humanimal said 400,000, right? Because that article that I found was before it was over. Christian B. wasn't in the mode of not hiding his actions. He had zero proof he was near or with Maddie. The images found none of Maddie. That doesn't fit his MO. Yeah, not if he's filming and videotaping, you know, like what he did to the 72-year-old woman. Oh, you have, Stephanie? I have to watch that as well. Let's see. Stuff shells is what I'm getting into. Yum, Ava. My mom. Oh, I, I need to ask my mom. I've, I'm not the best cook. And I've hardly ever had those. But my mom has made them a couple of times. And they were really, really good. We don't know the data they found does not include Maddie. They didn't ever confirm or deny she was on those tapes. It says that's Mel Mel. You love spaghetti, Corey. I like spaghetti, too. Yes, me too, um, Jenny. I took a picture of that name as well. Julia is not helping, and I cannot wait till it's can't wait till it's proved she's not Madeline. 
<laughs> I mean, well, her mom has agreed to do a DNA test, right? At a pr professional laboratory, not an at home situation, but she has agreed because if not, we're not going to know because the way that I understand the McCann's don't want to do it unless like she doesn't, unless she does one with her family and it doesn't come back that they're family. We have roast tonight. Taco crescent roll rings. Yum. That sounds delicious. Hey, Angie. The Fiona Sino case. All right, you guys, thank you guys for hanging out with me and talking about this case and the Julia craziness as well, which I'm glad we didn't talk on that too much. I really don't want to focus on that. I wanted to just, I mean, the one good thing about all of that is that it did bring Madeline's name back up. Like I always think of that when, when Summer's parents are acting a fool and stuff like that. I'm like, well, at least people are talking about Summer again, but. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me and I will see you all tomorrow. Um, yeah, have a good night and bye.